Believe it or not, there's actually a lot of aged compost ready for use in this chicken yard. But by the looks of it, you wouldn't know that. I need to take a little bit of time today to come through here and do some organization and some consolidation of all of this material. I've also made a decision on which rooster I'm going to keep. Uh, we had a little bit of a disturbance in here last night and he kind of solidified his own fate by his actions. So um, we'll be dealing with that today as well. But come along with me and uh, I'll show you what I'm doing in here today. There's about 6 to 12 inches of material in different places within this yard. And I need to take the time to come through and do a little bit of consolidation. Some of it's heavier material, some of it's a little bit more refined. But as I move this stuff around in here, it's going to reinvigorate the chicken's interest in it. Got herself a cricket. I'll relocate all of this heavier, chunkier material toward the outside or the periphery where these chickens like to excavate and move material. So I'll fill in areas like this and they'll continue to work it as time goes on. I need to make room for some of the material that'll be coming in this fall in the form of leaves that will not only gather from what we can get off of our property, but from where uh, other material that I'll be sourcing from elsewhere. And I've begun to consolidate it into a pile down here where it eventually will make its way all the way down toward the exit chute. One of the real benefits to all of the fruit and nut trees that I have growing in this space is just the amount of fertility. These are all been planted about two years ago and this is a tree here. This is a Pakistan mulberry that looks like it's probably planted about five years ago but there's my hand you can see the size of the trunk of this thing it's planted two years ago one of the downsides i suppose is all of the feeder roots that will be sent out from these trees and they'll need to be pruned off um, it's not going to harm the tree in any respect but i'll come through with my handy pruners and just give them a clipping provides a really strong carbon base for not only the composting that we do in here, but to help absorb the odor from all of the chicken manure. But a closer up view of the material that I'm gonna be moving to the periphery, and you can see there's various forms of carbon in here. There's peach pits and there's some bones and sunflower stalks, corn cobs, a lot of biochar. Milk crates have worked out really well here in the chicken yard and they serve multiple uses, but primarily I utilize them and line the fence line around the entirety of the yard because chickens like to get up next to something and then they start to do their excavating. And this prevents them from digging underneath the fence and just keeps them off of that by at least a foot or so. Another thing that's very useful for me is I take and I can move them around and utilize them as a movable barrier for dividing and separating my compost piles. I'll put rocks inside of these crates so that when the chickens are jumping up on top of them, they don't tip them over. probably got about another day's worth of work in here to get this dialed in how I want it. But at this point, I've taken down to grade out to this level here. And all of this compost has been in here for probably about a year's worth of time. And I folded it back over into this exit chute. And this is ready for use. It's very fertile, very well broken down and decomposed. What do you think? 
I've got a couple of chickens that I need to butcher, one of which is a rooster that's been fairly disruptive to the order here in the yard. He's starting to become a little bit more aggressive. And uh, we had an incident yesterday where um, just kind of made my decision a little bit easier. So um, I'm gonna take care of some birds this afternoon. And I'm not gonna show you any of that butchery process in this video, but if that's something you're interested in seeing just how these birds will be dispatched, I'll put a link in the description on how I do that, butchering them right on the back of my pickup truck. One of the best sources of carbon that's been infused with a really hot nitrogen is the bedding that accumulates underneath these roosts in the chicken coops. And this morning I'm gonna be taking all of this material out and replacing it with fresh carbon. But this is an accumulation of about, I'd say two months. And it's very rich and there's sawdust, there's wood chips as the carbon base. Plus you have a bunch of leaves from the chickens and of course their manure. But that's going to be removed, placed in these wheelbarrows. And then I've got two new rings that I've established. One right there and one right there. And this will be the mix that I will add with the green material that will get these piles jump started and well on their way for hot composting. These are bags of wood shavings that are set outside of a local mill that they just allow the public, general public to come and, and pick this up and it works really great for bedding. Uh, not only that, I get a lot of material and feedstock there for my biochar. It is now late October, almost November, and we are still flush with a lot of tomatoes and peppers here in zone 9A. And the chickens are enjoying the spoils of what was left over from today's canning operation. Rebecca was able to put up about eight quarts of tomatoes and peppers and onion and they are really enjoying themselves the autumn leaf drop is a tremendous resource and something that contributes greatly to the amount of compost that we make in here every year over the course of the next few months i'll be bringing in not only leaves from here on the property but i'll be sourcing them from outside as well thanks for watching please consider subscribing to the channel and we'll see you in the next video